progress in life doesn't really look like this. If anything, it looks more like this. You've got your peaks where things are exciting and fun and life is great. And then you've got your valleys and your voids, the crash after a high, the hangover after a drink, you know, when things just aren't going well. I'm coming off a pretty intense peak. I felt like I understood life differently after this office art project, and I found purpose in putting the whole video together. So I think because of that, my void was extra voidy. Going right into the holidays helped because that's its own distraction, just being around people. But then after that, there's like a void within a void because now I'm just kind of by myself and the emotional hangover is really intense. And I'm really struggling with finding that same excitement for art or life when it's just me and I'm not really being supported by, you know, other people's energy. But I can decide not to sit on my ass. I can decide to start the sort of ritual involved with surface prep. Jessoing a board is usually what I dread the most, but since I wasn't really feeling up to painting, I kind of enjoyed listening to music and doing something a bit mindless. I probably don't do enough of that. I should probably also mention this is a commission piece for my friend because her favorite character is White Rabbit. She also asked me to include a wolf somewhere in the composition. Red A somewhere. Wow. Thank you for that. <laughs> I think what's frustrating about the experience is that I have all these resources available to me. Community, therapy, all these bits of knowledge that have been imparted to me. Uh, my own notes on what is successful and yet I still feel lost, I still feel empty and it still repeats itself and I don't really know how to fix that other than to just keep moving forward. It feels like I can see the answers at the back of the textbook but the day to day is still rough, still difficult. So yeah, this is already looking a little bit better than it was before. I guess the objective is to find really nice like in-between colors that are kind of luminous and scatter them about. Once I turned my camera off, I started doing like more interesting things. So I kind of want to hold on to that for a little bit. So just a before and after comparison of how the face is reading and how adding more paint did work. So at this point, I've prepped myself mentally and physically for the act of actual painting, and I get to share the experience with Kat, who's also painting with me, and like, that's so much fun. We're getting somewhere. Wolf is starting to take shape, and Kat is working on her painting. What are you doing? Not stealing your paint. Uh -huh. Definitely not what's happening right okay. now. <laughs> you weren't supposed to turn around. Wow. It's just nice not having to do the work of, you know, Mixing colors, stealing them is much better. Wow. 2024. She's not giving a fuck. I'm honestly kind of exhausted by this point, but the fact that Kat is still painting is giving me that extra push to keep going. It looks like I'm having a lot of success using this very shitty brush and just kind of not caring about what I'm doing. So far, the wolf is the more like interesting thing. Fuck, I really like what's happening here, and I just want to not mess it up or overwork it too much. I think this is gonna help. Just having some of this cool over here on this side. Just not giving a shit. <laughs> Why did that work? What the f*** even is painting? I'm just doing random shit and it's working most of the time. There's something that feels almost arbitrary about what I'm doing. All I have to do is kind of make the decision to just stand here and then, you know, my hand starts doing things. I'm having a hard time because like this, I, I'm not happy with this, but super happy with the interesting things going on. And I'm like, how, how come I can't apply that? I have all the tools, I'm the same person. I just can't, I can't figure it out right now where I was able to figure it out like a few minutes ago. Can't figure it out now. There are just going to be days where making art is a struggle and it's going to ebb and flow just like my creativity or my mood. But it's important to recognize that neither phase, good or bad, is forever. What did that fix and why did it fix it? I just, I want to know. <laughs> All right, okay, we're getting there. This is already more exciting than it was before. Being ready for that dip was something that I was expecting. It's something that I talked to my therapist about. 
Knowing the peaks are temporary gives you an advantage because then you can prepare for the void. You can kind of be hyper aware of why you're feeling the way you're feeling and then to not necessarily dwell on it. I still felt the void, it still sucked, but at least I was able to get introspective and plot out how I want to approach 2024. Okay, let's make interesting decisions. I figured it out. This year is going to be a year about making interesting decisions. I will try to reflect that in my art and uh, other things that I do because everything will be bound to decisions. There is kind of this freedom in not caring what something looks like and that always ends up being, to me, what creates the most interesting stuff to paint. It's like this is, I guess, the kind of version of me that I want to be as the person who's kind of like this loose in life. I don't know how to translate that. I'm trying to enjoy the process more, that's what I was struggling to say. Enjoying painting as an activity as opposed to something to get done. Once again, using a bigger brush seems to solve all of my problems and just makes things look more interesting without me having to do a whole lot other than, you know, wiggle my hand around a little bit. Fun starts to happen when you stop giving a sh Even though this is a commission piece, I'm still doing my best to apply some of my new art philosophies while also injecting my personality and style into the painting. I'm gonna make one last push and give it all the energy that I have to finish or to get some of me uh, still living in that painting. That's also just kind of a nice way of saying this painting has a lot of my trauma in it. So this painting is actually the first in a series of three paintings that I'm working on currently. Now if only there was a way to be notified for when these two videos get posted. Hmm. Hmm. When in doubt, I can, oh. We're learning new ways to make marks. My thought completely got derailed. What I was getting at is anytime I come back to the painting and I'm like, hmm, where did I leave off? I just kind of take paint anywhere and put it anywhere because none of it matters. None of this really means anything in the end. I just can't, I can't figure out this face. Why? Ugh, okay, I don't know. I don't know. How's that for some like real time frustration and attempts at problem solving? But I'm having to make the, the concerted effort to, you know, make sure I'm capturing a story with all this. And so it's hard to really settle into um, being in the moment when I'm having to, you know, account for all of this. I think it, it also kind of adds to what I'm doing here. I feel like I end up being a bit more performative. Doing is more interesting. Again, it's just giving less of a shit. Because in the end, what's the purpose of like worrying about anything? It's all, it's all temporary. It's important to note that just, you know, throwing paint on a canvas isn't just some magical pill to make you feel better or to feel less empty. You kind of just have to surrender to the entire process. And hopefully you can chip away at whatever is hurting. There's a very specific reason why I've completely changed my approach to painting. So if you'd like to hear that story, click over here.